Welcome to Nerdgasm. I had a little pleasant surprise today when I showed up to do the show, the program tonight. I was informed by the director that I can't wear my green shirt. I have no idea why this is an issue. Welcome tonight. We have a very interesting program dealing with these guys' choices. What camera am I looking at? Four, three, two. I'm looking at two. Okay. But uh, we have our choices of the best bad movies. Tim, and, uh, Peppercorn and Joe's top 20 bad movies list. It started out as 10, but we got to 20. So it's now, just a lot of crap There's a out lot there. of crap out there. All right. Uh, we could have gotten 50, but we didn't want to be here all night. You guys clearly have not seen that many bad movies, judging from your list. No, these are terrible. These are terrible films. Ah, oh, gosh. I mean, see, I, I'm an independent filmmaker. I see a lot of stuff. So I think uh, you might have just, well, we're going to let the, you're going to let sorry, you with the, uh, you're an independent filmmaker? I never knew that about you. You never bring it up. Ever. <laughs> well. At all. Never well, once as, have as I heard an, this. As an independent director, I only feel courtesy to those around me and try to give them the benefit of the doubt for the work that they attempt to, to uh, put, which is why I'm letting Peppercorn host the, uh, that part of the show. Well, we purposely avoided a lot of independent films. Trashing people. Um, so uh, he does not suffer such uh, limitations as a person. Now today we're going to have a uh, Richard Griffin filmmaker coming on where he talked about his films, and uh, we also have a special nerd news girl that we'll be calling in, and we talk about uh, this week's three top news stories. Shortly thereafter, we've got Nellie Nels, <coughs> one of our regular staples of the show, who will be telling us her three favorite bad movies. So to start things off, I would like our Little Miss Horror Nerd to call in, to Skype in, and uh, we're going to be talking about... Is that her name, Little Miss Horror Nerd? Yeah, that's what awesome. it says. That's what it says in our license. And <laughs> really? Right, you know. Just, remember, remember, Are you lying yeah, to me? Because that would be very uncool. Am. Of course I am. I, I, I was hoping person, that she actually had her name. That was actually on the, the Do you remember that, that person, the other person who like legally changed their name to Obi-Wan Kenobi, so they're, they're licensed at Obi-Wan Kenobi? Max Power? <laughs> it's not exactly that, that case right here. So, uh, do we so, have do we have Little Miss Horror Nerd on Skype, aka Jessica Feeney? Well, the illusion's gone. No. Okay. Okay. Wait. We're waiting. For we're here starting off sharp. Okay. Hi, Timmy Packer. Hi, Lovely. It's good to have you on, on Hi, the Ellie. show with us tonight. So now we have three very interesting. There she is. Hello. There's Little Miss Horror Nerd. How are you? Hi. <laughs> okay, now Little Miss Horror Nerd is, is uh, your Twitter handle. Tell us a little about yourself. You are a, uh, you have your own site or what is, uh, what is it that you do? Yeah, so uh, I do a podcast uh, with a friend. Uh, his name is Ron Martin and it's called The Resurrection of Zombie 7. And we also have a website, which is called zombie7.com. It's uh, zombie and the number 7.com. And I do a weekly horror blog on the website. And um, I guess that's, you know, that's about it, really. That is kick-ass. We are now moving on to our top three news stories of the week, starting with number three. Take it away. Okay, so number three is uh, the filmmaker producer Judd Apatow says that the proposed new Pee Wee Herman movie is close to happening. Uh, Paul Rubens and Paul Rust are co-writing the script, which sees the character going on a trip. Shooting could likely begin before the end of the year. This is really great news as someone who loved Pee Wee's Big Adventure, but they've been talking about this for so long, I have lost my faith that this will happen in the time frame set. But I'm excited to see it if it happens. Judd Apatow and Pee Herman seems like a you know, winning combination. You never know until it happens. What do you guys think, fellas? Mm. 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 I guess it's OK. Mm. OK, they're not Pee Wee Herman fans. I'm a huge <laughs> Pee Wee Herman fan. Ah, I love that movie. All right, but I say now, we hang him. No, just I say we let him go. I say you let me have him. Ah, then we hang him, then we tattoo him, then we stop him, and then we kill him. So, just yeah, to imagine. We'll see what happens with Joe Apatow. Right. Tim Burton definitely put his stamp on those, uh, those movies. Yeah, even though he only did the first one, but after he was gone... That's what right, I mean, though, he put thing. his stamp, yeah. and he did uh, yeah. Pee-wee's Big Adventure, right? Right. <coughs> yeah. The big top Pee-wee. Oh, Nellie Nellis has joined us in the chat room. We're going to get to her in a little bit I now. I that early. You never paid uh, attention to Yeah, this is true. 
Jessica, what is our number two news story? This episode's going to end uh, up Filming has resumed on the seventh uh, Fast and Furious movie following the wake of Paul Walker's tragic death uh, last, late last year, says New York Daily News. Uh, the production will use a mix of body doubles and CGI technology for key scenes that the late actor did not shoot. The film is currently targeting an April 10th of 2015 release. Okay, I've not gotten through any Fast and Furious movies, but it was a relevant news item, so which is why it's highly list. entertaining. Well, the first one, and then like the last three. Okay, so yeah, two and three are kind of bugs. They're cr crap, but yeah. they're just big entertainment, high octane, like popcorn yeah. movies, and they're really in that aspect, they're really good. They try, they don't try to make anything more than that. No. With the safe, when they're dragging the safe down, it's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> so now, Jessica, have you seen any Fast and Furious movies, or are you like me? I'm afraid I have not. That's all right. Them. That puts us in the same camp. Yeah, if I did, I don't remember them. Uh, all right. that's fair. Okay, but so I, now... I, I, did, I, I did like Paul Walker and Joyride. <laughs> Joyride! I used to have a poster of that in my room. That was like, I, I, it was like one of those tr those horror movies where everybody was getting killed by like a truck or something. Joyride and Joyride and Jeepers Creepers. That was the other one. Oh my God. Yeah, I love Joyride and Rest Stop, too. Running Scare seems to be the two Paul Walker films that I hear most about. The people said he did his best work in, but I have no, would no, I haven't seen it yet. Jessica, our number one news story. Wait, we're not going to talk about this at all? No. Why? Because we're out of time. We only got, uh, okay, wait. wait. Is, I, is anybody finding this a little, a little weird? You Pee Wee Herman. Okay, um, what are your thoughts before we get to the news? I'm using the, I mean, I guess they filmed such a large portion of the movie. Yeah, that's. Just filling, yeah. Just filling it in, I guess. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's sort what it of seems what they did is, with uh, Brandon Lee. Yeah. Combining our first, third and second news story, I think they should use Pee Wee Herman to be Paul Walker's double and have <laughs> Judd Apatow direct it. Paul Rubens is very talented. Yes, shows a lot of diversity. Now. <laughs> Our number one news story. Uh, Phil Lord and Chris Miller could replace Ivan Reitman behind the camera in Ghostbusters 3. Reitman has left the project, but Lord and Miller, who recently directed the Lego movie, could be brought in instead. The pair are reportedly in talks to direct the long-awaited sequel, according to Deadline. Reitman, who will continue to act as producer on Ghostbusters 3, explained that he decided to step down after Harold Ramis's funeral. Jessica, your hair has overtaken your face. You have a oh, lot no. of hair. Oh, there you are. Oh, you're back. Hey. There you are. Okay, <laughs> now, Ghostbusters remains my favorite comedy horror, and I love comedy horrors. I don't know how to feel about this. I think that there's a good choice of director. I happen to like 21 Jump Street. This gentleman does not. I was uh, surprised by it, I'll tell you that one. Yeah, you know, uh, so... I remain cautiously optimistic. How, uh, how do you feel about that, Joe? Uh, I said the same. Th I'm saying the same thing about it now that uh, I said about it right after Harold Ramis dies. I said, I said, I don't. I really don't care what they do, because at this point, it's about if they're going to go through with this, it's about number one, treating it right and doing the right thing, and not just you know just making another movie. Like treat it right, open it with a funeral about a Egon. You have to acknowledge that. Um, so I don't care who directs it, uh, and I'm a huge, Ghostbusters is my favorite movie. I don't care who directs it, as long as they do it right. That's all that matters. Like, it doesn't matter who they're gonna put on, do it, it just matters that they do it right. Well, I gotta quote someone. I wanna be surprised by it. I, I want quotes. to like this movie, I really do. I really honestly want to be happily surprised when I see this, and I'm not saying I'm not, I'm just saying that's how I feel about it, just do it right. <laughs> quote someone in the chat room, 21 Jump Street equals quality. Don't put your feet in the table, Dave. Oh, hey, come on. <laughs> and Peppercorn, do you have anything to offer to the, to the Ghostbusters story? Well, like I said, pretty much after Howard Ramis passed away, I would prefer that this whole concept just be... Going away? Yeah. yeah and I'm, I think I'd be it, okay with that, too. Yeah, I think that if they do it right, yes, it could be, it could be a wonderful tribute to the films. It could be a, love, you know, a really a good note. movie. Yeah. Um, it could be like Star Trek 2009, I, in, a, in a way. It could be, but I worry that it's going to be more like Star Trek Into Darkness. Um, I feel like it's, it's on that path right now. I, you know, like people like Bill Murray is not really, I don't think he's even doing it. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's think just... So Ackroyd and, and uh, Ernie Hudson, pretty much. Maybe Sigourney Weaver. I actually heard Ernie Hudson said he, without Hal Ramis, there is no Ghostbusters 3. I would yeah. I, so I, I, I don't even know if he's, he's involved. I just think of, you know what movie I think of? Um, Blues Brothers 2000. Mm, yeah. yeah. Where they did it without 
Obviously it just loses, you know, like it's what it I was just going through. When the it's motions, only when yeah. it's only Ackroyd uh, returning. Now, Jessica, uh, the theme of tonight's program is best bad movies. It's all subjective thing. What are your three favorite bad movies? Hmm. Well, um, so I pick tar movies because I watch a lot of them, and uh, for the podcast, we actually do franchises. Uh huh. So I chose a couple that we've done recently that are pretty bad. I mean, there's, I guess there's a lot of best bad or, or even just bad. So there's a lot. yeah. Um, I guess I'm gonna go with, uh, the first one is, uh, Jason goes to hell. <laughs> that oh God. Is that really to be different. Yeah. That was really horrible. That movie um, made Jason X looks good, which is terrible. Yeah. That's another, um, that's, that's on there too. <laughs> yeah. That's a huge mess. Um, I also, uh, we also recently did the Critters franchise. So, Critters? Yeah. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, should, that should show my, well, that Each should show my gets better. Age. Yeah. So I picked Critters 4, and that was pretty crazy because it was set in space, and I feel yeah. like any sequel that's in space is just a mess. Oh, well, that's you know, like the natural thing. Space? Yeah, like every... <laughs> every, like horror film, space. every horror film ends up in space, pretty much. Yeah, does yeah. good. I know it's it's terrible, and uh, Angela Bassett was actually in that movie, and so was Brad Dourif, who I love. Critters four. Ah uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. got to pay bills. Yeah, yeah, got to pay okay. bills. We're, we're about to take commercial break, but uh, your number one worst, best movie. Uh, it's actually one that I don't know how many people have seen, but it is it's Try pretty and yeah, pretty horrible. Uh, cheerleader massacre, and it, <laughs> I have seen that. Uh, and it oh, was I don't know. Was that an independent film? Well, it was part of the Slumber Party franchise, and um, it was it was. Anything with cheerleaders in the title is usually well. Like, it was like a bad uh, soft porn movie that they tried to, um, you know, put off as a horror movie. Yeah, you know? I, I actually owned a copy of that movie. <laughs> I found it for like two bucks in FYE. It was in the big bin. Okay, it so was awful. We have to go to your website. What is your what is the address for your website? Can't believe you've done um, through that whole bin. Oh. It's so it's zombie seven and it's z o m b i e the number seven dot com, and Thank there you can find all the podcasts and all my blogs. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much for skyping in. Thank you for being on the program. Stay tuned. We're going to have Richard Griffin, director of I don't know like thirty, forty independent films. Maybe it's not quite that many. We're going to come right back with a uh, with this trailer for Atomic Brain Invasion, and then the, the Skype interview with Richard. Come back. It's going to be a lot of fun. See you soon. And me and Tim have something to do. In Revio.com. Transmission of lice occurs from being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Like catching a cold or a flu. You have guaranteed peace of mind in every bottle of Got Lice because all of our products are completely natural. And organic. But strong enough to cover all your lice removal needs while being safe and effective. 
Our professional technicians are specially trained with our exclusive proven technique to successfully comb out head lice. We come right to your home at your convenience. Whenever you want us. We bring everything needed to perform a successful and complete comb out while eliminating your head lice. And we leave you with our exclusive complimentary products to use for the next 10 days following our treatment. For free. Our technicians also check all family members who have been exposed to lice. Please visit us on our website today at gotlice.co or feel free to call 24 hours a day, 7 days a week at 646-257-0121. Welcome back to Nerdgasm. This is in the background, the trailer awesome. for Look at this. <laughs> Richard Griffin's Atomic Brain Invasion, which is a throwback to some of, a lot of the films that were considered uh, awful. You know, Plan 9 from Outer Space, a lot of these sci-fi films, 50s, 60s, Atomic low budget, films. but you know, much more of a, uh, much more of a uh, camp kind of motion picture, released through camp motion pictures, so it's very fitting. I believe we have Richard... On Skype any second now. He's a filmmaker. Uh, Keep vamping, Dave. Okay, I, um, maybe he thinks we're calling him. So let me get back online. Um, okay, so Rich, a call in. That's my favorite. What, run, don't walk. <laughs> call in now. Walk, don't run. Skype in now, <laughs> Rich, while you can. An evening in Branson. Uh, okay. What's the sequel name? No. Evening in Branson too. <laughs> Call. Okay, this is what I'm doing right here. There's some minor miscommunication, and oh, he's on. Hey. Right Whoa. on. Whoa. Look. I like this guy. There is Rich on set of a film, and the actual Richard Griffin. How the hell are you man? today? Welcome. I'm good. The uh, connection. Your connection is not very good, though. Your audio is breaking up. That's not true. Your ears are breaking up. I'm speaking perfectly well. Okay, so, Rich, I'm looking at the trailer for Atomic Brain Invasion. I'm assuming that the the inspiration for this kind of film was movies like Plan 9 from Outer Space. If I'm wrong, tell me now. So what was the inspiration going into this film? It was a little bit. I mean, there's there's definitely an homage to Plan 9 in there with the movie that the characters are watching in the theater, the black and white film. But it it, it was just like a mess of every... 50 sci-fi film I watched on television growing up like The Blob or you know Invasion of the Saucer Men and things like that it was it was just kind of this amalgam of all these movies I saw growing up so not just quite Plan 9 is definitely referenced in it but it was a, a lot of different ones and kind of as much as it's that it's also Disney live action films from the early 60s was a big influence on really it. like the stuff like Kurt Russell's the computer that wore tennis shoes and things like that. Yeah, that kind of oh fun. man, like, oh but yeah, with a uh, very strong horror slant. And right? I, do you find it's, that it's actually we, we like to refer to that as our arguably G-rated movie? Aha, uh-huh. but it's not G-rated because you're incapable of doing something G. The trailer was no, not I G-rated. No, it is actually. I think I think if it got rated, it'd be a either a, a heavy G or light PG. There's no profanity. There's no violence. You know, there's. I mean, no one dies. There's no sex or nudity. I mean, it's well. Some people die. Mind, I'm not seeing this. The cover is a, a man ripping his face off, revealing the, the brain. But you know, that's that's our. That's an awesome cover. Now, <laughs> how much? How much do you do primarily horror? Because it is what we're able to do right now. I believe in the background, we're playing the trailer for uh, Murder University. 
But you do primar <laughs> primarily school for everything. horror yeah. because it's it gets out there, or because it is a dying passion. Or would you do you really want to reach out to other uh, genres as well? Well, I've actually I've directed things other than horror movies. Um, I've done like action films and comedies, but all my I think all my film all my horror movies except for Exhumed um, and uh, to an extent Beyond the Dunwich Horror, they're all comedies. Hmm. You know, with horror elements, but they're all, they all pretty much are much more comedies than they are horror films. Right. And, but I love, I mean, I love both genres, and I, I grew up watching horror films and spent a lot of time, at, you know, I'm old enough to have gone to the drive in oh, and seen a lot it. of these. I saw the, you know, John Carpenter's The Fog and all that at the drive in. Uh, so, I mean, I love horror movies, but I, I don't look at it as like, oh, well, that's what the marketable thing is. Especially now, I mean, there's, <clears throat> you know, there's no market for anything, you know, except for comic book films and whatnot. So, I, I, I don't think of it that commercially. I just, so, I just whatever picture. project interests me at whatever moment. All right. We have a picture of you from, uh, from one of your onset experiences. When you look back at the show later, I think you'll... Uh, I think you'll laugh yourself. So now, how did you get involved in filmmaking? Is this something that you wanted to do from like your childhood, or was it like you turned 25 and it's like, hey, there's a camera. What happens if I pointed at people? <laughs> now, my father bought me a Super 8 camera when I was 12, and I just started playing around with it, but I didn't think of it as being a uh, vocation until, until I was about 20, and I got, I, I got hired at a television station writing commercials. I mean, I was basically going to be a writer. That was my whole thing. I was kind of studying journalism and things like that. I really had no interest in becoming, getting into this business. And a week after being hired to write commercials, the, the head producer directors actually got married and they needed someone to, to direct the commercials for the time that they were on their honeymoon. Right. So, uh, actually, speaking of which, uh, some, of that, some of that skill... Must have come in when you made Feeding the Masses because you have these brilliant fake commercials in Feeding the Masses, which is well, like that your... Was, that was actually shot at the television station I was working at at the time. Yeah. Um, and it was really, I mean, obviously, it's, it, we're you know, talking about kind of all the Fox News stuff that was kind of going on at that time. This is right after 9-11. But yeah, I mean, it was, I mean, I was kind of just thrust into this in terms of learning the craft and everything, you know, and, and I directed probably over 500 commercials. Um, in the time I worked at the television station and, and PSAs and all kinds of magazine shows, live television. It was, I did that for 14 years. So that was kind of my film school. Right. And uh, for, how is what you do now different compared to where you thought you'd be? Like when you started off, you said to yourself, I'm going to be directing, I'm going to be directing this kind of film, this kind of film. How is, it, how is the industry and where you stand now different than where you thought you'd be versus where you, when you started. Dave, there's no plan. There's no, there's no like, oh, this is where I was going to be in five years or anything like that. I, I have no plan in my life. I just kind of drift. I'm like the, I'm like the feather in, uh, in uh, you know, uh, Forrest Gump. I just float in the breeze. There's mm -hmm. no, I, I, I enjoy what I do. And, you know, I love the fact that uh, I get to make exactly what kind of movies I want to make. And that's it. And, but there, there is no, there's no master plan. Now, you've dealt with, wait, how many films have you directed? 18, 19, 20, 21? <laughs> what <laughs> is... Like that, yeah. So it's, it's, I, think we're, I think we're at 18 now. What is your worst on-set experience? What was the, the, the story that almost, you know, that made you said, am I in the right profession <laughs> or not? Oh, I don't know. I think you always, you know, it's always balanced. You, you have your bad days and you have your good days. I want to hear the bad. Well, I don't know if I, I, you know, there's there's certain times where, you know, oh, I, I'm feeding the masses, actually, uh, one of the actors almost got shot by the police, and I don't mean kind of like the typical, you hear this a lot. Tell us that guys, story. The cops, the cops come, and, you know, they actually had their guns drawn and aimed right at him. Was they that their really? Finger, their fingers were actually on the triggers, and they were going to shoot this guy. He had a prop gun, mm -hmm. and he, he when they came to the set, we were shooting outdoors. We had permits, but for some reason, the line of communication between the film commission um, and the police broke somewhere along the line. And um, five cop cars came out of nowhere, 
uh, surrounded us, and they had their guns on this guy. And f from what uh, one of the police officers told me, they were about five seconds away from putting a round in his chest. Was it Billy Gabardina? No, it was uh, Patrick Cohen. Okay, yeah, the military guy. And, and, he, and um, basically, what happened was when the guns came on him, he froze. And luckily, my camera operator on that film was a Gulf War veteran. He was a he was a videographer in the in the, the first Gulf War, and he actually shouted. Finally, broke the kid's spell that he was under to put the he had a rifle to put it down, but he almost got killed. And I remember I went out through there was woods around the the perimeter of this location. I went out to the woods and vomited for about 15 minutes <laughs> after it was done. Can't believe that, you had was, that much. That was probably the worst thing because I mean. You, you, I mean, it, it, it comes with the business that you're going to have days on the set where things don't go right, but to actually have someone almost die on your set for your silly zombie film, that's really, that was probably the worst day. Well, how, now, here's, here's another question. How do you get such solid production values on such a low budget, and what is it you do when you're not making movies? Because it seems like you're the Stephen King of filmmakers, because it's like one after the other, after the other, after the other. I can't talk right now. I'm on production of the next film, but I got the next one coming up. And then, but we got to go uh, post production of the one that came before that. So, uh, how do you get the production virus like that? And what is it also that you do when you're not? Well, that comes out of commercials. Uh, my boss, the guy who taught me kind of everything I know about making commercials and whatnot, always said, focus on the stuff the audience notices and not the stuff your ego notices. Um, and really, it's, it's a, a concentration of detail. But we don't, we don't spend a lot of money on stuff that uh, some other filmmakers do in terms of like, you know, we have to impress everyone and have like three red cameras on the set and, you know, uh, all kinds of, you know, elaborate equipment or anything like that. I try to focus on the stuff that the audience uh, pays attention to. Deep set, set decoration, art direction, I find is incredibly important. The one thing I notice with a lot of indie films is they pay no uh, attention to art direction. So they'll shoot in like these rooms that are bare walled. Uh, or they're shooting, it's supposed to be like a teenager's room, and it's obviously the director's grandparent's room. You know, there's no, there's no attention. And I find art direction is very important. And, and it's just, it comes from experience. It just comes from doing it over and over and over again. And what do I do? I garden. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I'm very boring. I live a very boring life. I've been married for, I've been with someone for 10 years now. Uh, I live a very uh, humble, boring, wonderful life, and I said I garden and I uh, read and uh, I do some art, you know, and whatnot. But also, I tend to help out on other people's productions. I work as a director of photography and editor on other movies. Oh, that's but, great! We have a production coming up. I'll be giving you a call. Now, <laughs> uh, Rich, you gave us, you gave me a list of your three favorite bad films, which I will be reading at the very end of the program. Why not now? Uh, but we did it. We did. Uh, I did. I do have for you a our advan an advanced look of the twenty worst films of all time that we could throw up on screen. Just you know, just to show you, get your reaction from that. And oh, there they are. So. Uh, yeah, how about that? No, number 20 is uh, Plan 9 from Outer Space. What and, is this? Uh, and uh, there are the rest of Number 1 is Raving Maniacs, 2 Creature from the Hillbilly, from the, uh, from the Hillbilly this Lagoon, Titus and Jessica's, none of that. Oh, what do you make of this list, list Richard? I think it is the ultimate list. I yeah. think this way just covers it perfectly. I think, well, I've um, seen a couple of these. You know, I think this is definitely the be-all, end-all list of, of the worst films of all time. Okay, we're I'm kidding, just, audience. This is uh, basically his filmography. <laughs> so he's done that many films. Richard, thank you so much. Tune in to the end of this program so you can hear. I'll be reading to you his three favorite bad movies. And in, uh, in the meantime, we're going to go head off to Nellie and Nell. She'll be calling in any second now with her favorite three. Richard, thank you so much for Skyping. None of that! And... Uh, <laughs> We, uh, we're now going to have, before we hit our commercial break, Nellie Nels is calling in, and she's giving us our, her three favorites. Her three favorite baddies. We Yay. are awaiting your phone call, but we'll tell you what, we will do that as soon as we get back. Setup. And we're going to head to commercial right now. Somewhere in that commercial break, she's calling in, and Peppercorn Montgomery is taking over the hosting duties for the show. Yay. So let's cut to commercial right now. Yay. Yay. Hey, this is your good buddies, Bruce and Disco from the Glory Day Show, which can be seen every Sunday morning starting at 10 a.m. here in the East. We have sports highlights, movie reviews, 
and celebrity interviews. We have out-of-town correspondents, Timmy the Trotter giving us horse racing tips, and at the end of every show, Mr. B does a live song. The Glory Day Show, found only on Arabio.com, broadcasting to the world. Catch, Catch us. We are okay. back, and on the phone is Nellie Nels. Nellie! Hi, Nellie! Hello! I love the very Batman-esque picture. Right. Yeah, so I was I. the Batgirl last week. <laughs> so your three and least favorite films are all Batman. Am I, not, am I mistaken? I love Batman. <laughs> you okay. know I love Batman. All right, so let's We've hear your movie. three favorite bad movies. All right, I call them, this is my awesomely bad movie list. Uh, number three. Class of Newcomb High. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, my grandfather Lloyd Kaufman's gonna be very upset by that. <laughs> uh, it was, that movie is terrible. It's hilarious. Uh, it's so gory. And how funny is it? They're, they're smoking toxic pot, and then the mutant baby. I think it's yeah, hilarious. It's literally the whole it's so of the film. it's so bad that it's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, your number two. Number two is Mothra. The Mothra I love the original. It's, I love cheesy monster movies. I, the twins in that movie singing the Mothra, Mothra. My favorite part. Love it. Okay, and your number one. My number one awesomely number bad one. movie is Cry Baby. Come on, Johnny Depp, Ricky Lake, Iggy Pop, like There's running around movie. singing I and like that doing movie. a <laughs> <laughs> great movie. I think we might have all kind of liked that movie. <laughs> I, it was a gr it's a great bad movie. It's, it's John bad. Waters. There's so many. There, it's it's a bad movie. The, the uh, effects are cheesy, and the, the, the singing soundtrack. is funny. There's inconsistencies. Like her hair changes lengths like three different times during the movie. <laughs> running out of money. Do you know? Yeah. I think that was rusted during the Cry of Baby was cut from oh. an NC-17 to a PG-13. Probably the only film in the ratings history that's gone like that's fallen that deeply. So out there are some places in NC-17 cut of the film. <laughs> oh, yeah. Possibly because Tracy Lords was in that, and you know, that girl would do anything in front of the camera. <laughs> I didn't even think Tracy Lords was I thought it was a great, like, I thought it was an awesomely bad movie. I love it. I watch it every time it's on. I think I own it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to cut to our top 20 list as spearheaded by Peppercorn Montgomery. Nellie, I look forward to, uh, to challenging you on online Tetris sometime soon. 
word, I'll get you. All right, Melody. <laughs> Take care. Great hearing from you. Night, guys. <laughs> Good night. So wait, who decide? Take it away. Go first, or I would go first. I don't know. Maybe we should take a commercial break for to discuss. <laughs> uh, Other commercial break. You have the better voice. Why don't you read? Uh, yes. All right. I'll, I'll if I have anything to comment. say about them, I'll, I'll bring it up. Very good. This list is in no particular. Actually, we should. We should tell why why we chose this yeah. list. Um, originally, the idea was uh, best worst movies. Yay! But then we thought about it, and we were. Don't no, put, take that on the list. It's a surprise. Take that on the list. Okay, there you go. Yeah. That's, that's no fun. Nobody cares yes, about surprises. At the, yeah. Um, at, the, at the end so of it, we, we decided that w that wasn't fun. So we just decided to make a list of really terrible movies. The phone is off the hook. Mm -hmm. um, you can't hear that. I guess that was only makes sense to me. Anyway, so we decided to just pick, and we tried to avoid um, independent films. Yeah, because there's a lot of crappy independent films. Yeah, but you know, it's like some guy is following their dreams, so I didn't want to really exactly. crap all of the dreams if they're not here in person so I can see them crying. <laughs> um, so these movies are just bad. big budget Hollywood. They're just bad. They're, bad movies. These movies have no redeeming quality. None. Oh, you guys are kidding me! None. You guys are kidding me! I've read this list. I've there's made no way notes. you're telling me that there's a few there's a few things on this list that yeah. have no right for being on this list. Go take it away. Let's hear your number twenty, guys. Well, we're going to start from number one. No. We're, we're starting from number one. We said no in particular order. You want to start from number 20? No, Damn. let's start from five. Five. No, let's just start from the top of the list. Start from okay. the top of the list. Okay. Oh, wait, I'm reading it. Yeah. I, I will start from the top of the list. I had to print this out for these guys to read. What did I The Exorcist 2, The Heretic. That movie is just bad. I actually, we watched it in preparation for this. Had, yeah, I watched it today. There's that movie. This is an Richard example Burton of is, a sequel that's made without watching the original. None of the in that movie makes any sense. No, it just, just doesn't make any sense. It's 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 got a cool concept, but the execution is just silly and stupid. Yeah. You know, like. But <laughs> in order, it shows you the very fine line sometimes between a bad film and a good film. You had John Borman as a director, director of Deliverance. You have an A list of uh, cast. Cast members, I mean, a lot of well, good actors Richard in Burton there. In it. it doesn't mean the movie's Burton, good. Yeah. Right, but the thing is, you have so many of the right elements, and then suddenly, what I mean, that that fine line between being scary and being silly is crossed because they're, you know, technically the film is pretty good. It's you not got even good silly. camera moves. It's Stupid. It's bad. <laughs> but I mean, the thing is, I, I've seen so much worse than this film, <laughs> but it is not a good movie. It no, is not it's a good movie. Bad. No, it's it is really bad. Brand. The no, biggest. It's, yeah. The biggest drop from quality from one sequel to another, from an original to a sequel, even a lip sync Phantom Menace, between the originals up here and then the sequels down here. Uh, I think. Phantom Menace better than The Exorcist 2? Uh, you decide, <laughs> America. And tell me, because I don't know if I want to make that call. You know, but what time period does this take place? It's shot in 77, and they got the. It's like a futuristic kind of movie, but. Why? Because it is the whole. Because it's a bad movie. It's a bad movie, dude. You're looking. You're it's trying to save the whole thing with the movie. headset. And Let the. Sometimes. No, give me. Sometimes the rabid beast needs to be taken out to the cabin and shot. Basically. This is what. <laughs> in, in, Enio, Enio Why Morticone. is it in front of a dog? Oh, because I don't know. It's a I don't dog. think we could use any of the pictures. I most oh, of the pictures okay. I said in. Because you know, I, yeah, because it's a dog. You know, I'm saying that this is. But the thing is, Enio, have the list back. Enio Morricone. Enio Morricone is the composer, and you got this great score. I'm you done got a talking lot of about things. how crap this movie sucks. I'm sorry. But I'm gonna cut you off right one. here, man. This what movie. We do this weekend. I don't know. I don't want to talk. Like, certainly when is another Captain the America exorcist? two come out? But I, I got to say that Richard Burton, like Rod Steiger, was a, no, was a pretty great actor. But like Rod Steiger, was prone to bouts over overacting. You know? Oh, what? You don't like to analyze because things? Because you can't defend this movie. You I'm can't not, defend I'm, it, I'm, but it sounds I'm, like you I'm are. I'm analyzing right? it. I'm analyzing it. Analyze. There's nothing to analyze. It's just yes, it it's is. a bad script. It was, it was, it was given you a lot of money by the studio. Right. You guys just throw the baby out with the bathwater. If you want something, you know, well, something's well, also there's something there's 20 films to get through. And you, okay, but so this, so you want to dedicate just a modicum, because this is the number one on your list, just It's not in a particular order. Okay, fine. Gotcha. Next on our list is, uh, do you have notes to defend this one? I hope so. No, it was only Exorcist 2 is the one that I looked at closely. <laughs> he ran to one. <laughs> the next up is Mac and Me. I watched this movie as a kid. Oh, this movie is... I, 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 I had dog to... Again. 
It's not the only They're color. dogs, you know? Like, a oh, movie's great. bad. It's a dog. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> Megami is just, it's like, it's let's make E.T. Yeah. worse. That's, That's what it was. It was a... Uh, it's just, and it's just, a, it's a pile of trash. Yeah. I mean, you have the alien in the, in the bear suit dancing around. Oh, car. my God. Oh, I forgot the, about the that. product placement is ridiculous. Yeah. And, oh, it's... It was a cash-in on E.T., and I, you like me, I didn't like E.T. much to begin with, no. so it's already, like... I know. Everyone loves E.T. Well, to hell with it. But it's yeah. not as good as Turkish E.T., though. I'm sure it's the world's better. But Mac and Me is just... a lot more smoking. There's not a whole lot to talk about because the movie's just, it's just oh. bad. It's just a campy, stupid... It might be some of the worst alien effects you've ever seen. Oh, the puppet's so dumb. <laughs> Oh, we so, got an interesting uh, comment from the chat room that uh, says, I was, oh, was at a movie theater working when this came out, E.T. ripoff with Ronald McDonald. That's pretty much, yeah. <laughs> That's basically the best way to sum this movie up. Basically. So, unless anyone else has anything important to say about Mac and me, and I God, I hope not. Moving on. Moving on. North. Now, yes, we I, have, I have something prepared for North. Yes. Do you know what North is? Yeah, this is a movie the that Rob Roger Bryan. Ebert said, I hate, hate it, yeah, hate yeah. it, hate it, hate it, hate it, hated this movie. Well, this I'm going to read that on air right now. Yeah, because it's one of the tribute to Roger. It's one of the Ebert. greatest reviews I've ever read in my life. I'm just going to skip this really good part. And this is Roger Ebert's review of North, and then we're going to move right on. For you younger viewers, Roger Ebert used to be a film critic. Yes, I hated away. this movie. Hated, 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 hated this movie. Hated it. Hated every simpering, stupid, vacant, audience-insulting moment of it. Hated the sensibility that thought anyone would like it hated the implied insult to the audience by its belief that anyone would be entertained by it. I hold it as an item of faith that Rob Reiner is a gifted filmmaker. Among his credits are This is Spinal Tap, The Sure Thing, The Princess Bride, Stand By Me, When Harry Met Sally, and Misery. I list those titles as an incarnation against this one. North is a bad film, one of the worst movies ever made, but it is not by a bad filmmaker and must represent some sort of lapse fr from which Wein Reiner will recover, possibly sooner than I will. Okay, now, what <laughs> did you think it? of it, Joe? It's crap. Okay, now, you're pretty much copacetic with what, everything that he wrote. Basically. Have you seen the movie? I haven't. It's really bad. It's really it's, and bad. Rob, and I agree. Rob Reiner is a and good it's director. An, an amazing cast of people that you think be like maybe one of them could like save it. You know, yeah. Kathy Bates, Jason There's Alexander, Dan Aykroyd's in it for God's Robert. sakes. Um, Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis. Well, Elijah Bruce, Wood. Bruce Willis is a pretty daring. Jason Alexander, Julia Louis. Dry, the list goes oh, on. But it was just it was a crap script. It was poorly executed, and it's it, just it was a crusty script. Um, <laughs> but it wasn't good, and they just the way he executed it was just oh, not it's good. Just, it's, you, all you, you, it's all you, stereotypes and broad jokes. Oh, it's so bad. But moving on, North the North is sucks. So we're moving on. Here's one of my favorite movies. Not really. Um, Battlefield Earth. Oh God! Has anyone seen Battlefield Earth? I know we joke about it, but has anyone actually? Hey, I've actually. I think John Travolta's seen it. That might be the only person. But I, I actually tried, and I watched Battlefield Earth because I, you know. Sometimes you're like, oh, look, a train wreck. Have you ever seen it before you watched it? Yeah, I watched it. I, I've seen and, it. Wow. Wow, it's a, it's a I mean, John Travolta, film. he's not the greatest actor in the world, but he's, he's been He's done better his, than that. Yeah, and he's been in good movies. Yeah. Didn't he pick anything up along the way? You know what, the funny thing, I did some research about this movie. You know who wrote the book? Oh, L. Ron Hubbard. L. Ron Hubbard. Yeah, it's a Scientology movie. It's a Scientology movie. movie. Yeah, <laughs> I guess it was like the recruiting video. Hence, yeah, hence uh, why Travolta. And Forrest, uh, what am I doing in this film is Forrest in the movie, Whitaker. too. Forrest Whitaker. <laughs> and the, the lead guy is Barry Pepper. Yes. And it's, this is like one of Barry Pepper's it's, first. It's, and Barry Pepper is a really good actor. But like, it was like an was, early role for him. Oh, it was so bad. Yeah, listen, no, the thing about this movie, is you roll, you're going to take it. But the thing about the movie is it makes no sense. No, the whole nothing. thing about this alien race taking over, yet they know nothing about the species. Remember when they break into Fort Knox? Oh, yeah. They just found out about it, and yet they studied the culture. They didn't figure out that they, it, was, it just makes no sense. It, well, it insults the audience. Intense, intestinal parasites attacking me is more entertaining than Battlefield Earth. Says Bad movie. GSD Music. Who's that? GSD intestinal me. parasites attacking me are more entertaining than Battlefield Earth. I watched it once. Better than a sleeping aid. <laughs> that was a good one. It's kind of like if you woke up getting kicked in the face by a donkey over and over again. Yeah, that's B Battlefield Earth. Moving Dirty on. Dirty, smelly donkey. Master of Disguise. And I feel bad putting on this on this. This is a terrible movie, but I love Dana Carvey, love and Dana I think Carvey. he's done some, has some great things he's done in his career. Wayne's this World. is not Wayne's one World of them. No. 
This, I mean, it's just one really bad joke yeah. after another. It's, oh. and it's not like campy funny. It's just no. bad. It's not. I mean, funny. we came across movies that people were like, "Oh, they're bad movies," but it's like they're so bad. Like, they're for good. example, Plan Nine from Outer Space yeah. is terrible. Yeah. But God, is it so much fun to watch? Oh yeah. And you can't help but have a good time. A movie like Master of Disguise, you can't enjoy is it. Supposed to be a comedy. Yeah. And you, it's not. You sit quietly. It's a tragedy. <laughs> It's, it is. You start You start reading the Evening Post. Yeah, basically. Do they still have the Evening Post? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Okay. This is actually one of Joe's favorite movies. It is. From Justin to Kelly. Um, he didn't want me to put it on the list. He's a huge Kelly Clarkson fan. And, um, and I'm a huge Justin, whatever the hell his last name was. No, I'm not at all. Guardencio. This was in the early days of American Idol when they tried to oh, cash in. Oh, it was a blatant every, just cash in. Oh. Like, it's shameful. Let me put, give you an example. Do you want? Does anyone want to see a Spring Break movie that's G-rated? No. I yeah, want to see Ted. Of course I do. <laughs> Dave does. Does anyone want to go with Dave to see a G-rated Spring Break? Yeah, movie? Yeah, we're gonna come on, be fun. Where the two leads sit on boats and sing. Yeah, it was a with, musical, wasn't it? I, weird can't, I can't trash talk this film because an actress that I knew from uh, the set of Thunderbox's TV show, Brianna, or whatever her name is, the blonde girl, she was like the antagonist in this thing, so I can't... Did she I'm, write the did movie? She write the did movie? she direct the movie? Uh, did she produce the no, movie? I don't believe it was the actor's cool. fault. I, it wasn't the actor's I fault. I think it was the script and, and everything it, else. But I was excited when she was in it, and then I heard all the reviews from it, I'm like, that's too bad. I'm willing to bet she wasn't too excited when it came out. I don't agree with you on that. <laughs> that's a fitting title for this movie. The way that, that's a great. Uh, it kind of matches your shirt when you. <laughs> From Justin <laughs> to Kelly. Oh God, I'd like uh, to announce the next one. This one's been talked to death, so we'll just mention it and move past it. Yeah. Gilly. Ben Affleck's done better. If he didn't do good in this, Ugh. moving on. He played that card in Chasing Amy. He tried to do it again. It's like watching a baby get run over. It's, it's nothing. What? It's, <laughs> it's, like, it's like, like watching, watching a baby get run over. And then Al Pacino example. shows up and you just feel bad. Is he? Uh, you you want to drive him back to the home. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Who's the chicken in again? Oh, that's right. Jennifer Lopez. Ugh. Terrible. Oh, boy. Here's another one of my favorites. Catwoman. There's nothing. With Halle Berry. Remember she won an Oscar? Does everyone remember that? She won an Oscar. It Catwoman. wasn't for this film, pal. No, it was for Monster. She won a Razzie for this one. And she accepted This is it. an award-winning film. Yeah. She did accept it. Good God, for her. I give her that. Bully for her. It's a bad movie, though. It's a bad movie. It's so stupid. From everything. From her name. Her name is Patience. Of course. It is just... The, the whole cosmetic angle with the the the, the, the only thing that suit. actually <laughs> ties into the comic book is the name. That's it. Cat it has Boy. nothing to do with. It doesn't you, even take place in Gotham. I've got to ask you. i got to ask you guys something. Supergirl versus Catwoman. Oh, I'll watch Supergirl the Catwoman. Yeah. I can't watch this movie. Supergirl is no. bad. Supergirl's but bad. It's fun to watch. Fun to watch. Yeah. Okay. Catwoman is just like Catwoman is wow. horrible. I feel bad for everyone involved. I sent them all. Sharon a Stone is a good actress. Not in this. <laughs> what she was, was her superpower? She, was the she had like metal stone face. Or something. Yeah, she was like super plastic surgery. And only Catwoman's claws could cut her. Yeah, it was dumb. That's what you're dealing with, folks. So yeah. go rent Catwoman. Go ahead. Don't have a laugh, woman. Don't encourage these people to make bad movies. Is the message of this Basically. episode. Basically. Speaking of really terrible movies, Jack and Jill. It's just bad. Poor Adam Sandler. No, actually. He's just, Forget him. <laughs> Adam Sandler, if you've been making, movies, making right? huge, profitable comedy movies, you should know better. And that's, this is another one. Also, Al Pacino in this one. Yeah, I love Al Pacino. That's Not the magic though. ingredient. Well, it's clear Pacino. that he's um, sometimes more about the paycheck these days. I kind of I don't let so. it bother me too much because he's done so much good work. He's kind of just like, I'm just going to coast. I mean, coast. He, gets a, he gets a hall pass. Yeah. I, had a, I had a friend I had a friend who showed me the last scene of Jack and Jill. And I've got to say that the last scene was pretty funny. The Duncan Chino? The Duncan Chino scene? I don't think I made it to the last It's scene. not funny. Man. Yes, it is. No, Burn not. this. Burn this now. Al Pacino playing Al Pacino? Okay. The scene, that's the all I saw. Movie. That's all I saw of it. It has at least one redeeming quality. See, if you had watched it all the way through, it your soul would have been broken. Yeah. You would have been <laughs> unable bad. to laugh at what might have been the only funny joke. It's maybe oh, if you watch it in reverse. Everyone go home and what? Go home. You're watching this from home. 
Yeah. Um, Him is the other. Watch Jack and Jill in reverse and tell me how it goes. Yeah. The other one that we, we almost put on this list was another Adam Sandler. Which that's one? my boy. Oh, yeah. I only saw like 10 minutes of that one. That's I've seen Jack and Jill and that's my boy and they're both really bad, but Jack and Jill is it's just not, there's no, there's not a funny like, that my boy is just a, like made me laugh just a little bit because it was an R-rated movie. Yes. So you, there was the jokes were and just Joe slightly better. I do. In every sense of the word, by the way. Read into that. All right, number 10. <laughs> I can hear Matt. I didn't. What, what qualifies things with this list is if you take a great all-time actor and you put him in your movie and you make him look bad, oh. a la Richard Burton in The Heretic, Exorcist yep. 2. Uh, uh, Sir Richard this, Burton. You a knight. That, your movie deserves... Here's a perfect example. Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, Jeremy One of my Irons. favorite actors of all time. And Jeremy a brilliant Irons. actor. Looks like he just started acting yesterday. Oh, it's so bad. I mean, he's over the top. He's camping. He's mugging to the he's camera. So bad. This actor who's known for subtlety and poise yeah. is just, oh, talk about ham. Oh, so bad. Last week's ham. God. And I don't even remember what the point of the movie was. Dragons, something to do with dragons. And there was at one point a dungeon in it. That was, that was stupid. And then, I remember like seeing the I think trailers. Mark Strong's in it. Mike Strong. And uh, so was one of the Wayne's brothers. Oh, yeah. Marlon, Marlon. Wayne's is in it. <laughs> Funny. Oh, here's one The Spirit. Ugh, this was such a letdown. Because <laughs> this, this was. This Frank nasty. Miller's adaptation of The Spirit is comedy. very good. And they tried to adapt it for screen, and I don't know what. The hell they did. But this is another work. example. Well, so obviously, it, good it's, actor, bad performance. But yeah. inspired yeah. by it, actors in it, actually. Yeah. Inspired by uh, Sin City. The whole approach. Right. The whole feeling of it. Well, it was it, it was inspired by Miller's uh, uh, the way he drew comics. Right. Right. So it but wasn't. It was inspired by Sin City. Right, they wanted I mean, to do it like that. They tried to cash in on Sin City. But Sinsity. Miller directed this film, right? Yeah. It yeah. Just so, shows but he's the thing is, yeah, he's, he's not. He's not really. He's, he's trying to do what he's a consultant on Sin City. But right. there's a difference of you know sense. Rodriguez being a real technical director and right. knowing you know knowing the craft of filmmaking versus Miller who's more of a, you know graphic <coughs> you know graphic storyteller. So that's it's just a disconnect. As a student film, it's not bad, but this is a student film. This was a student film. Some of NYU show this to me. I'd be like, that's good, not great, but you have potential. This is crap adaptation though. Ah uh, yes, there were a lot of hot chicks in it though. There I were guess, a lot of Nazi uniforms too. Yeah. yeah, now I feel bad yeah. about liking that part of it. Yeah, Miller's got it. Once again, right. here's another example. Uh, this this, this is, movie this is, killed one of my all-time If this was an order, I, know I might put this at number one, actually. This, I thought yeah, about it. If we actually had an order, this movie is so bad. It one of my favorite somebody. video games, one of my favorite actors. I'm sure there was something else it ruined for me. Oh, ruined John Claude Van Damme, one of your favorite actors? He is so oh, good. good. <laughs> no. No, Raul Julia, in his final film role, in all he's done and all the art and wonderful performances created, yeah. he will go down as being finally remembered as, as Bison, Bison in Street Fighter. Oh, it's And he, even him, he looks bad in it. It's like, yeah. I've seen bad movies with good, you know, like, for example, Christopher Walken does a lot of terrible movies, oh, yeah. but for some reason still always very... Puts his, I guess he puts 100% into every role he does, I guess. <laughs> Why not? You never know when it won't get a part. Exactly. It's hard to believe. He's in every freaking movie. Uh, but yes, yeah, Street Fighter. That's a so bad movie. Bad. And you just feel bad, because the reason why this is on the list is because it killed somebody. It, it killed did. Raul Julia. An now, amazing actor. people will actor. tell you that he had cancer before that, but I don't care. Street Fighter killed him. Of course. And for that, Cause it, of death, Street it should Fighter? stand on trial, and yeah. I stand by that also. And it's just a stupid, stupid... It's like the epitome of like what I find wrong with people that want to adapt video games to film. I'm not against it, but when you do it like that, that's just blatantly like we're not trying very hard. Mm. I don't know. I guess... I guess they try to make it for kids. Yeah. I guess that's where the big mistake comes Remember, in. Did you ever play the, the video game they adapted from it? The Street Fighter, the movie, the game? No, I never. Oh, wow. my God. Why did they do awful. that? awful. They did it like Mortal Kombat, like the original Mortal Kombat, where it was like motion capture. Yeah. It, was like, it was so bad. Oh, God. Everything about that Everything stinks. about Everything about this movie, everything that's connected to this movie, just is awful. Just awful. I feel like there was something I liked about it, but then I remember there wasn't. Nope. Um, number Thorpe. <laughs> number Thorpe. Number Thorpe. Um, number 13, Jaws the Revenge. Uh, I mean, how do you... Gonna, you have something to say? You went like this. 
No, I'm just I'm just underlining the sentiment. That's all. Jaws the Revenge, Jaws which is Jaws Revenge. Four for you people who don't know, where they go to the. The Caribbean, first like ten minutes Jamaica. of this movie isn't bad, and you think you're in for a decent ride, but it, it just they lie to you, because it's actually like the whole with the kid losing his arm. Oh yeah. It's very Jaws, and then after yeah. that, it's just awful. capture capture the spirit for five minutes. For five minutes, yeah. yeah. First the credits, after the credits, they should have just made a short film. Oof. So, I think it's, time, we're probably, it's probably time for our commercial break. Now right. we're on lucky number 13. I think it's uh, time revenge. we got to commercial and... Uh, well, after that, I'm ready for when you come sandwich. back, you know... It, uh, human sandwich. When you come back... Oh, Showgirls, all about Steve. Showgirls is fun to watch. There's a lot of... Indiana tension. Jones, the last one. Catwoman. They're I funny. I, 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 I get Jones some kind of pleasure out of watching too obvious. <laughs> you Plus, I've already talked about how much I hate that movie. Uh, so, uh, Showgirls is fun though. It's terrible. Showgirls it's fun. is just like it's, it's, no match, it's like a it's glorious no match Showgirls too. I watch it on TBS. It's even. It's, there's no a match for Showgirls too. too. There's, there's a Showgirls, there's Showgirls too. too. So uh, we're heading out to commercial we break. We need more free time. Like Dave. Now, and uh, the... okay, just just go to commercial break over us. In Revio.com. Hey, this is Gina Cotillo from The Gina Show. Come join us every Wednesday, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for Celebrity Interviews, Reality Reel with Billy Charles, Funny Funny Stories with Brian Guineer, and much, much more. The Gina Show can be found only on InRadio.com, broadcasting to the world. So come and catch us. Good evening, and welcome back to Erotic Painting. Uh, we are in the middle of our 27-part series on the breast, and I believe we left off on the areola. Do you want me to pose now, or? Yes, please, get okay. up there. Oh, right, we're talking about bad movies and classless jokes. Yeah. Um, did you want to say something about Jaws the Revenge? You didn't. No, 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 I was saying go right on to your next film because I take objection to your next film. Are you kidding me? White yes. chicks. White chicks on this list. I got this uh, this uh, list emailed funny. over to me, and you know what? I found this movie funny. So it's an absurd premise. Nobody's gonna believe these two brothers as white chicks. It's inherently a tiny bit racist. But when you have jokes like Sean Wayans uh, living in somebody's house, pretending to live in a big mansion, and when that man's dog walks over, that he's not his, and he has to pretend that it is his dog. Hi, boy. That scene was damn funny. And there's a number of scenes in this stupid film, because let's be honest, it is a stupid film that made me laugh. Wait, are you, are you serious? Yeah. All right. Yeah, but I, I mean, like, if you want to pick, no, 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 pick on a film, why do you pick on Little Man? We were just talking about We're little just man. talking about Little Man. That movie yeah. sucks. Right I know. I just couldn't remember the name of it. Thank right. you for remembering that. Little Man, yes. So, you I might mean, be right. Guys, I might give Dave credit on this one. Little Man is probably worse than White Chicks. Yeah, you should swap out you know Little what? Man, White Chicks. Little right. Pen. Yeah. Oh well. No, now no. it's set okay. for the ages. Sorry, yeah, White Chicks. Hold on. And Little Man goes unscathed. 
Okay. Uh, uh, I was really joking about the pen. Okay, go. very good. Okay, Timmy Packer agrees with me. I think a lovely agrees with me. Oh, did we, Joe, are you supposed to read this thing? Oh, yeah, by the way, speaking of uh, white chicks. <laughs> While I'm updating the public files. Uh, Cher Lloyd is coming to the Paramount Theater in Huntington, Long Island, New York, Sunday, April 6th at 8 p.m. And in Ravio's got your tickets. And Ravio's got your tickets. You're doing great. <laughs> Click on the contest tab and log on to Paramount. 21. Paramount New York. Dot, ParamountNY.com for a complete listing of all the shows. I'm not going to ad lib here. Don't read this file. Okay. Oh, wait. Lovely says that white chicks made her cringe. I thought she Lovely's liked it. Lovely's got probably right, but I think Little Man was a worse film. Although she did say she didn't like Requiem for a Dream. So Lovely is a, is a, is a very, is a very uh, savvy person out there. Don't say anything against her. So uh, what's like your Black next uh, item on the list? I love Black Swan. We're not getting into Aronofsky until Brrr. Noah comes out, and then we'll have a whole episode about it or, some, or stuff like that. Uh, next up, this was a hard one to find. Yeah. We had to find the right one that fit this whole genre of films. And when I tell you the title, you know the genre of films. I, I wanted to say, like, we're going to say this title, but why we said it, it it's really, like, it it's, represents it's all of them, with the yeah. exception of very few. Nice, nice wipe. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thanks. Um, Meet the Spartans, which was a really bad spoof of 300 in case you didn't finish really it. Really bad. And it was one well, it represents two. disaster movie, yeah. superhero All those movie, stupid scary movies. movie four and five. Not the first scary movie, that one's funny. Epic movie and all epic, yeah. date, date movie. Date, date movie, movie. Oh. all those movies are bad. Those spoof movies that are clearly written by, I don't Idiots. know, monkeys. No, I feel bad saying that about monkeys. Yeah, What's just, worse than a monkey? You have a story about this movie, don't you? Oh, Meet the Spartans? Oh, a friend of mine had, had, was adamant. He was like, no, no, there's always some good funny stuff you'll find in this. And we'll get drunk beforehand and be hysterical. Um, this was the most sobering film I've ever seen. It was like, you know, it was the saddest I've ever left a film. And I saw Schindler's List in the theater. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Next on the list. list. Next on your list. A uh, double feature of somebody I hate. <laughs> After Earth. Oh, Oof. I knew this movie was going to be bad before it came out. Yeah, there was nothing, no good buzz going on. I actually, out. oh, I have a little segment for this too, actually. Ooh. Because uh, this is segment, just folks. top ten reasons. This is just a top ten quotes of reviews about After Earth. Just really quick, from different critics. Number 10, summer 2013 has had its first bomb, and sadly, it landed right on Will Smith. <laughs> Number 9, it's impossible to take this movie seriously, certainly not as seriously as it takes itself. Number 8, even with its charismatic dad in his, in his earpiece calling the shots, Jaden can't turn himself into a movie star by sheer force of will. <laughs> Number seven, so cruel as, for, as for I the plot, it. I guess recycling remains in vogue centuries from now. <laughs> Number six, not since John Travolta kicked the tires on Battlefield Earth and pronounced it good to go has there been a big name sci-fi flame out quite as disastrous as Will Smith's After Earth. Number five, the director of The Sixth Sense used to be known for his surprise endings, but the only twist that could explain this mind-numbing nonsense is if we awaken to discover we'd been imprisoned in pods and subjected to a sequel called After Earth, Battlefield Earth by L. Ron Shyamalan. <laughs> Number four, like actually, in Critics Academy, we are taught never to end a review with a sarcastic quote from a film, from the film under the consideration, the tactic is just too easy and cheesy. Yet here, the temptation proves irresistible. So here's one more. After some mini, mini catas, cas, uh, catastrophe, <laughs> this is funny. After some mini catastrophe, Kaidi mutters, that sucks. Radio is his dad, correct cadet. Number three, After Earth has a hit of the skin-crawling fright of Shyamalan films past, but not enough to explain why the director's films keep getting worse. It must be body snatchers, ones from a planet that has no clue how to make a movie. Number two, 11 years and several progressively more dreadful movies after Signs, director M. Night Shyamalan could be lucky to get a gig directing Traffic, which is my favorite, by the way. <laughs> Number one, I fear Jaden might face online wrath for his performance here, especially thanks to the numb-tongued Kiwi accent he's forced to adopt. He's not bad, especially, but he is a kid asked to do the extraordinary. Compel us as he pretends to do ridiculous crap as Will Smith coldly instructs him to feel, to root 
to root in this moment now, to master his own creation. I felt the purest horror I ever have had at a Shyamalan film. What if this was, what if this is what Jaden Smith's life is actually like? Wow. This movie. Was I now awful. feel bad for Jaden Smith. I don't feel bad Let's either. Let's talk about how much we all like the remake of The Karate Kid. Yay! It was, um, I like Jackie Never Chan. mind, let's not even talk about that. The next up, also from M. Night Shyamalama Ding Dong, <laughs> is The Happening. Um, this movie was... I hate this movie. Everyone, the plants are going to kill us. I have a funny Scary story about stuff. this. I saw this movie. I called a friend of mine who was on tour at the time, and I said, don't go see this. It'll make you physically angry. Like, you will literally get mad. As opposed to... And he didn't see it. And then a couple months later, he called me, and he said, I, I saw the happening. And I said, why did you do that? I called you and said, don't see it. And he goes, I threw my mattress out the window. And I go, what? And he said, I got so angry, I took my mattress and I threw it out the window of my hotel room. And it was a true story. He sent me a picture of it. Okay. You guys, everybody should know after the next, last few M. Night Shyamalan films, just don't bother. Just, I mean, there's never I'm been a worse track record. I'm glad you don't like him I think he's a hack. Because, I mean, Lady in the Water, The Village. Uh, Lady in the Water was like the most... The, pompous, the pompousness of him to put himself I, in the lead. I get through a lot of, I've got a lot of, that's actually not even the film's biggest problem. But I get through a lot of films that are, say, underground and, you know, kind of yeah. bad. And uh, this was less entertaining than all of them. And it was just one after the other, and to the point where you just say that there's no reason I'm going to see this film. Yeah. You know, well, so I mean, if it says M. Night Shyamalan presents, that means I'm. They didn't put his name plastered all over After Earth, is funny enough. Yeah, which kind which of didn't the help. first time in a long time that they haven't done that. But uh, I mean, Dave's absolutely right. At this point, do the world a favor until M Night Shyamalan's going to learn how to make a movie again, which clearly he can. The Sixth Sense was huge. Yeah, but huge I argue success. the fact that you can only watch that film once, and then it's, you yeah. lose the effect after it. Sure, but even yeah. when you're watching it the first time, for like you know, ninety percent of you, you're like, "Wow, this is kind of boring." Oh, what a cool twist! You know, so it, even during the experience of watching it, it's only a twist, that, a gimmick that happens at the very end that right. makes it a great film. Yeah. You know, so all the stuff before Although that's not that, you know, not, not that great. You know, the funny thing about it was I went, I, 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 a couple months ago, I went back and I watched Signs. I wanted to watch something scary, and I remember, because when I, I saw Signs in theaters, I'm like, this movie freaked me out. And, like, I watched it, and I started to realize, but well, this dialogue is really bad. Hey, Joe, swing away. It's really bad. It's real. I because I, I remember liking it at the time, away, and I'm just yeah. like, this dialogue is so. It's hokey. It's so trite. It's so hokey. Stilted. It's. But the, oh, and, 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 nobody then, talks like that. And it's it's exactly how the dialogue is in the happening. The mm. happening. The dot. Mark Wahlberg, I think he can deliver a good performance. He has delivered good performances. And I literally think the moment was M. M Night Shyamalan was like, do it like this, and he was like, are you kidding me? Does, I, I made notes at one point about this movie in case anybody defended it, and I was just like, I, one of my notes was, what? No, enough said. He, the way that he delivers these, these lines and this dialogue is just, it's awful, and it, it, nobody talks like that. Is, there, is M. Night Shyamalan American born, or is English a second language? Because sometimes that happens when, you know, the author is not from the country. Maybe. I don't Are you know, a I've fan heard of The Village? Speak. Did you guys I, like The Village? No. I, it was I not the worst film I've ever seen. Yeah. You know, that's a compliment. But it wasn't good. I've heard M. Night Shyamalan <laughs> speak enough that he sounds like he's from, you know, that he's from an so, English-speaking country. I've so. got a question. Why is number 18 not higher up the list? Because this is in no particular order. Particular order. It's just, okay. So that's actually the one, I think that's the only one that's actually considered an independent film that's on here. But it is. It's a million dollar budget. How they could have done that on a million dollars, I don't know. And how he raised a million dollars. Yeah. How he convinced people to say, this is my favorite. Some people are just, yeah. a, some pe some, he probably just pitched it. This is, he you might, give me a million might dollars or I kill your family. I don't understand, like, you know, I, I don't understand how that could even be a good pitch. I could only think, and what is this? I've worked in the theater enough, and I've worked with enough people who have theaters and run theaters. And, just, and I know people who are really good at raising money. Yeah, I, I'm and sure. Re, and talking people into supporting their art. Um, I gotta believe that's how he did it. Yeah, he might have either him or the person he works with yeah. might have just been an excellent fundraiser. Um, the Maybe movie he had a friend who was rich and just the was room. Right. Yeah, this is the hand. I know this. Listen, there's a movie out called The Best Worst Film, which is a documentary about Troll. Oh, I was gonna 2. bring that up later. Yeah. Yeah, Troll Two and Troll Two is a terrible movie. But I love it watching it. Oh, Trolls. Matt, the room. But it is the room, the room. up in the background. Oh right. Um, but Troll 2 is absolutely delightful to watch. 
It's yeah. so it's it's it so, is bad, so it's bad. Good. It's, it's good. good. It's a pure example, and that's kind of what we tried to stray and away so, from yeah. because we wanted to pick a list of just bad films yeah. like that are unwatchable. And you, what did you say about this? You said this this is fun to watch in clips. Yeah, the movie The Room. If you watch clips of it, you find them on YouTube. You can find tons of them yeah. where it just shows you like thirty seconds of the movie you watch and like, oh my god, that's awful. <laughs> if you try watching. The whole movie oh, straight through. It's like a, an endurance challenge. It's like being really dragged naked across a field scene. of barbed wire. Oh, it's oh, so bad. Oh, it's, it's so and it's so like this. And what I actually this is kind of the kind of films I was trying to find because this guy had to think I'm changing the world right now. <laughs> I'm making an Oscar. He had to think yeah. that because I guess you sort of have to. He, you're he really like he he treated himself yeah. so seriously. Like he's try He's not a good actor. No, nobody in this movie well, is a good I can actor. Barely speak. No, Gary Busey is very funny, Matt. <laughs> yes, he. Me, his insanity is funny to me. As long as it's out of distance. <laughs> he was in Lethal Weapon One. He was awesome. Um, That's true. He was. Um, um, but like, it's just Mr. Joshua. I, you could. You can tell that they were. He was taking this so seriously. And it's a pure example of just a bad, bad movie. It's a, you know. It is. And the fact that people, I guess you kind of lend itself to the fact that people found it and be like, oh my. God. I imagine it's like a water cooler conversation. Like you got to check this out. Yeah. That's like. Or if you watch it with um, the riff tracks. Have you watched it with the riff tracks? I watched pieces of it with the riff tracks, and it's basically a lot of the riff tracks is just them actually. Moaning at how painful it is to watch. To quote yeah. Invader Jim in the chat room. Invader Jim. Oh man, I feel worse for the girl that got naked in that flick. It has nothing to do. It was. It did nothing for the movie. I think or a picture of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she'll never get naked again oh. for anyone. Mm -hmm. None of these actors can do anything. Remember when they played football in Texas? Oh yeah, every time they have like a, a conversation, it's like let's play football. Yeah. Because that's what real life people do. Yeah. Every time I see Joe, we take break out the That's football. That's what we do. Yeah. We're gonna do that right after this. Actually, we just tackle each other. It's very homoerotic. Anyway, uh, next like up, bears. speaking of homoerotic, is Batman and Robin. <laughs> <laughs> nice segue. Uh, I'm a genius. Uh, this oh, one. I actually like that one. That looks John like the. Dave. That it looks sort of like the old '60s version. Which I can't wait. For I create all these all these images you see behind you. Aren't they stellar? It looks like they took me all of 30 seconds to create each one. Well, I was trying to give you a compliment, but okay. Wait, yeah. I, the room will be on Cartoon Network's Adult Swim on April 1st. Oh, I love April Fool's <laughs> jokes. April Fool's. Batman and Robin, uh, we talked about this movie. A little bit, yeah. I believe we got angry about it. Or it was we more all, because of Batman just, and Robin's and versus Batman Was this Richard. because we were watching the trailer and we were like, uh, this, this, this movie is just insultingly it, bad. It, from start to finish, there's nothing like... Like, I, like I, I come from the world of, it like, it's Batman, I'll watch, I'll watch anything with Batman, I love Batman, I'm a huge Batman fan, and I'll watch anything with it, and I watch this movie. I think this was actually, the, no, actually, Batman Forever was the first Batman film I, th I saw in theaters. But this movie is just, as a kid, yeah. I understand why, like, I don't know, a ten-year-old kid, I understand why you like this movie. When you actually read a comic book, this movie's awful. And it, I, it's just so, it's, it's, and I, I, it's, it's overly well, homoerotic. it's a perfect example of Hollywood excess. Well, it's also, uh, who directed it? Um, Joel Schumacher. Joel Schumacher. Who directed he, other good films. Good it yeah. doesn't make any sense. I mean, Lost Boys, all that. Incredible Shrieking Woman. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm not saying all his other <laughs> no, movies but He's directed good stuff. He's capable of doing it. But listen, there are a lot of directors on this list, excluding M. Night Shyamalan, who have directed and good been films. a part of yeah. other... Very good. And movies. actors. And I mean, like, you know, like the perfect example, of course, was North with Rob Reiner, who's got a great Whose re resume is amazing. Yeah. Um, we just won't rewatch The Princess Brides. I love that movie. Yeah. And so, stuff. And final is the worst movie that's ever been made of all time. And I think Joe will agree with me on this one. We came. I mean, it was, I, I just want to say, we, were, we had 19 movies, and we were going to do 19. And we were racking our brains about, like, what we really felt was, like, the, not the worst movie ever, but we needed one more film, and we landed on this, and I shockingly, me and Tim both agreed on it. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't, didn't think he would. It's actually surprisingly popular. I don't understand why. Forrest Gump, I, I mean, I, you, you guys, pure you guys, I don't get it. You, you guys are like hipsters, right? Yeah, I mean, right? totally. Right, so, you know, I bet you hate I don't wear skinny it. jeans. Remember, and like, right. remember that entire segment where he just hate, runs? Yeah. Oh, my God, what do I... You hate if, movies that are just. If I wanted to watch the Olympics, I'd watch the Olympics. Yeah. 
trite performance, a two-dimensional bad depiction. I'm supposed to believe this guy was show. involved in great world events, oh, come like on. just because he's an Wait idiot. Wait a second, I'm beginning to presume that you two don't actually mean this. Why is he talking? Like I don't that? know. Let's stop talking to him. <laughs> anyway. I wanted him to talk like that. <laughs> I don't want him to talk like that. <laughs> We're quoting okay. the movie. Okay. <laughs> so now, now this is this is not something that you legitimately believe belongs on this list because when I read this, no, you wanted to make a joke, uh, but you ruined it. Thank you. Okay. Well, you're welcome. That's what I do. I just try to destroy. Did you jokes. think we really That's hated Forrest Gump? I did. Did you really? I think? thought you wore skinny jeans and hated things that are universally loved. You know that you were being like cool and ultra hip. I have met people that don't. No, I'm gonna. Actually. I, I actually planned ahead and thought. You would say, call us out on this. And I, I, I decided to pick a movie to put on this list that we don't have a graphic for, but I came up with this on the way over here. We could draw a that, picture. Yeah, we could draw a picture of it. And I know Tim will agree with me on this because I, 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 I happen to think he's right, and I, I don't get it. E.T. I don't think E.T. is a good film. I don't like E.T. I don't all. think it's a good film. I mean, the kids are annoying as hell in it, but... Um... I think full circle, that movie's bad. People. Well, if you were to rate it on a scale of one to ten, what would you give ET? I would have like three, a two, maybe a two. Right, I can't I'm, I'm stand give, it. I'm gonna give. Uh, I'm gonna give it a high rating, but not as high as everybody else. I remember as a kid, I was like, "Well, that film's kind of overrated." Then I was like six, you know. So I, uh, whereas I don't. Well, I saw it in the movie theaters and I was scared because I was you know, a little tiny kid. kid. Yeah, exactly. And you know the way the way you know when you first reveal ET and he's in the shed and it's dark and it's cloudy and stuff yeah. like that. And um, and of course I had older sisters, so they were making fun of me, which just made it worse. Um, and still do, by the way. Thanksgiving, this comes up they every keep year. Putting you in the shed. You hid during ET, <laughs> like it happened last week. Exactly. Um, but no, then a few years later, I sat down and I was like, well, I should watch ET now that I'm not terrified or being mocked. Um, and I watched it and I was like, it's like, ugh. It's it's what it's. it's, it's, it's the, <laughs> It's, it, it's it's so, and I've coined this phrase. It's so Spielbergy. It's so oh, it's, it's like saccharine. It's dude. so bad. Ugh. You know. Okay. And it's, I don't it's, think it's, it's 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 a little hokey, but a little it's a got, little hokey. Well, it's also it's also designed for kids. You know, I bet you Spielberg. It is designed, it's designed Spielberg. for the masses. I, yeah. I go against that. But it was designed for the masses, Spiel, not, it's not it's not just to kids. But you know what? Okay, here here's going to be a little bit of a controversial statement. You will, you will both disagree with me on this. But I think ET holds up a little better than does Close Encounters of the Third Kind because of the pacing. Because Close Encounters. I would agree with that. Hey, you close Encounters. Because yeah, Close Matt. Encounters. Yeah, Matt. Close, close Encounters of the definitely third, takes its time. Damn, I'm so confused time. here. Do you not like Close Damn Encounters? It. There we go. I do like Close Encounters, but it is it. I, I haven't seen it in ages, and it. I'm afraid it to watch it. Certainly takes a long time to get to the point. I'm afraid to watch it again. Yeah. Because I, I loved it so much as a kid. And but Jaws, I'll watch over and over. That's because Jaws was before yeah. Spielberg got corrupted. Yeah. And he made Jurassic Park is another one I will watch. I will watch but Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park is hokey in a lot of, you know, of course there's kids. But it's, it's just, but it's, see, I'm that's not fun prepared, to watch. I'm not prepared to defend E.T. It's also not like in my top 20, 30, or, or 30 favorite would you, films. Where would you put it? Would you put it in your top 100 films? Yes. Why? Because there's a lot of things about it that are great. And also it does not hurt that it has a John Williams score that's amazing. You know, there's, there's a lot of... I'll give you the John Williams score. But don't you think movies like and also not judging somebody and something for being a little ugly in the story? There's a lot of there's a lot of the, you, the, the filmmaking of it though. The filmmaking, yeah, like it's ugly. You're talking about the, the oh, way no, they I mean, shot. E. Ugly? No, 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 no. I mean, like E.T. is a character that that teaches kids. You know, something might be a little unsightly, but it doesn't mean that it's a bad character. Uh, feeling like an outsider, feeling like the kid. I mean, uh, I mean, you like don't think Elliot. there's a message that just shoved down the audience's throat a little bit. It's all forced. You don't think also that the the balls on a director to go and re-edit a film, and for no reason other than I want to take the guns out. You mean like with the whole oh, yeah, talking and guns? It made it down. worse. Sure, but that's a different story. You're talking about the, you're talking about the. Uh, it was already bad. Cut. Now it's worse. Okay, uh, uh, to uh, lo lovely, I'm not saying that I dislike Close Encounters. I like Close Encounters. I just found that the pacing compared to a lot of other Sp Spielberg time, films. It, that's it one is, thing I can remember from that movie. It builds and it was, builds and builds. It was pre-1941 where Spielberg just lost it. He just kind of fell too in love with, you know, uh, uh, taking his time to tell but a story. But I, I, yeah. I know for a fact I'd probably like Close Encounters over E.T. Okay, well. I'll give you that. Uh, I think it's yeah, time that we head out to a... Okay. Keep going, man. All right. Keep so, it going. All right. Do we have any closing thoughts on our top 20 list? Because there are a couple well, things so I would like to say. There are 21 minutes left. 
It's it's hard hard to know. There, are, there, are, <laughs> there are thousands upon millions minutes. of bad movies out there. And some of bad movies are exceptional and fun, and we love them. The best it's, of the worst. Yeah, the, truly the best of the worst. But they're, you know... You need to be able to call a bad movie on being a bad yeah, movie. Yeah, and I think that... And don't go to movies that are bad. Why do no. people go to movies that are bad? I'm no, because bad is also a very subjective term. What's one man's Sometimes. poison is another man's time. I understand like, what I conceive. Like, per example, I don't like one movie, Tim may like it. Yeah. Batman and Returns. Exactly. We read the whole Batman okay. Returns thing. I think Batman Returns is an awful film. He likes it. Okay, we're going to head to a commercial. Like in the meantime, I want everybody in chat room to put down their favorite bad movie. We're going to read them when we come back. Also, I want to give a, tell you a little something about Starting now. our guests, our guests, top three favorite bad movies, and more once we come back after the commercial. In Revio.com. Oh, you're writing on my arm, Tim. Speaking of writing on my arm, <laughs> did you know, guys, that Cheryl Lloyd is <laughs> coming to the Paramount Theater in you Huntington? You don't say. Oh, in Huntington, really? Long Island, New York, on Sunday, April 6th. Do you want tickets, guys? I sure do. Oh, well, and, and radio has got your tickets. Excellent. All you got to do is click on the contest tab. Contest log tab. on to ParamountNY.com for a complete listing of all the shows. Do it now, guys. I know you love Cheryl Lloyd as much as I do, so I'm going to say it one more time. Click on the contest tab, log on to ParamountNY.com for all complete listing of the shows. I didn't realize that Cher and Christopher Lloyd had a love child. Matt, uh, uh, I was Joe. thinking more Lloyd Bridges, but all right. Matt, uh, Joe, uh, I want you to read name. everyone's picks in the chat room. Just okay. scroll up a little bit, and then I want you to read through I what know how to use everyone's mouse, Dave, <laughs> for everyone picked. There's a lot of everyone, everyone picked Caligula. All right, hold okay. on. I'm gonna go back a little bit so. here. While he's looking through that, I am going to uh, rent. Remember at the start of the show, Richard Mar Griffin, our I guest, glasses. had told me his three best, his favorite three there. bad movies, and his favorite three bad movies are number start. three, Night of the Lepus. Anything that involves giant rabbits is going to be a cute. But it's movie. fun to watch. Right. Uh, number two, <laughs> Miami Connection. Do you guys know that? I don't know that one. I think I. Who's in this? Is it like a poor man's Miami Vice? I don't know. He's in Miami Vice. I feel Vice, like I've heard of that film. Miami, Vice. Miami Connection. And his number one pick is Night of the Ghouls. And when I asked him why, he told me uh, it's a very uh, high rewatchability factor and a, th uh, and a threadbare surrealism. 
So that was our guest's top three favorite picks. And now we're going to find out. I'm going to start in the from a chat certain room. point. I'm going to start with Wolf Boy, room. NY State's going too fast for me. <laughs> There's a lot of picks. Now we're I'm going to start with Wolf Boy, NYC. Uh, he says Weekend at Bernie's. I actually like that movie. Well, the point is favorite. Favorite but, bad movie. No, okay, just favorite bad movie, Weekend at Bernie's. Uh, he keeps boy. doing things. Uh, let's see here. Guilty pleasure, bad. How do you spell that? <laughs> I'm going through things. Wild things. Go There's away. a guilty Wild pleasure. Wild things. Can't get that is a bad movie. movie. Hell of the Living Dead. I, I've seen Dawn of the Living Dead. Is that like Dawn of the Dead, only more lively? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else we got here? I don't know. Everybody's just saying things. I'm gonna go back. Somebody said That's how a chat room works, Joe. Everyone says that. Who said Caesar not of summer camp? <laughs> uh, it's lovely. okay. She's You're on the bad list life. now. You must she's be punished. Not, she's the love of my life. It's okay she could say that. Robo Geisha. Blackula. 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 Have anybody actually seen Blackula? Blackula's not bad. It didn't get such bad reviews. You got good, pretty good reviews. You would say that. Um, <laughs> I mean, just like, you know, the concept alone is... It's, the title. It's, it's the height. That, that, it's the movie Black is, Dracula, and they just call it Blackula. It's, it's the height of Black exploitation. You know, it's the height of even it. More so, exactly, you know, even more so, than, watch. Even so more so than Blackenstein. Come on, somebody throw a good one out there. Let me see. Somebody throw something really good out there. We got, we got time to kill. Who said Santa Claus con conquers the Martians? Has anybody actually seen that? Yeah, yeah, Timmy Packer, Timmy Parker. But the thing is, do you know that Santa Claus, there was a double feature in Ohio of Santa Claus versus the Martians and Was that Caesar like a Mexican and, film or something like that? No, it, P no that P was the Pia 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 right. first film. Uh, Santa Claus conquers Martians. There was a double feature with my film, Caesar on a Deadly Xmas. The Ninth Gate. <laughs> the Ninth Gate. <laughs> that movie tries so hard. <laughs> I just watched that again, actually. Horribly bad. Fun to watch, though. The vampire happening. The vampire happening. We, we, have, we haven't heard of that. Okay. Come on, come on, guys. Okay, so now if we get to bring it back to me. So uh, I wanted. Well, we had a couple minutes left in the come show. On, Let's I, just wanted keep to, the <laughs> I wanted to. I uh, wanted to mention. Robo Geisha. Mention best worst movie was a film that I was a documentary Jobs. about yes, the making. Guys, this is, this is, I'm, I'm trying sorry, to look at this. Wait, I just want to say I have to shout out. Wolf Boy NYC is talking a movie about a movie called Robo Geisha. Has ten good demon chicks with acid breast and milk and nipples. <laughs> no, really. Okay, and lovely. Sounds like my ex-wife. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> lovely. That keeps, wasn't half bad. Lovely keeps wasn't mentioning. Wasn't all bad. <laughs> I'm lovely, sorry, Dave. Go ahead, Dave. Lovely keeps bringing up Daredevil. Not a film that I, that not a film that I. We don't have time to delve into Daredevil. Okay, but we'll have to do an episode on one day, and you know I'm what? Just Daredevil. Maybe she can be in the studio for that special episode. three-hour episode on Daredevil. Right. Okay, so hey, maybe that'll be next to the next episode. We got time to kill, man. Okay. Also, uh, throw some, throw some. Uh, we got just a couple minutes left. Throw some Give ideas some on, 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 on what you would like to see in a future episode. What content? I would like romantic. to do Iron Man and Daredevil would be a hell of an episode. Now, never mind. Give me more to, bad movies. No, <laughs> now to I'm get back kidding. to uh, the thought I was getting at. There's a documentary called Best Worst Movie. We brought it up. We touched on that earlier. They're really before, active in this, right? Which now. was about the uh, making of Most Troll people. Two. Troll Two was never intended to be, I think, the sequel to troll, but after the marginal no, success of Joe Cara, but how do you say his last name? Like, oh, he was some, something Italian. Butch, Butch's, Joe Don Baker? No, uh, uh, 1986 movie Joe Troll. Are you guys really had, like talking over me? Yes. I am trying to host go a ahead, segment. Go ahead. Okay, so 1986, there was a movie called Sorry, Troll. <laughs> There's a 1986 called Troll. Now, this is a bad an Italian movie too, director way. came along and uh, got financing for Troll 2, not related to the first film. This film was so notoriously Remo Williams received. is the name of the director from Troll 2. I think it's a movie. Are you done? I only Can said one name. Now? Go ahead. I don't think the okay. director is Remo Williams. That was the name of a movie. Remo Lovely yeah, saying right. Trojan Wars. No, he's talking about so bad movies. Remo Williams. Oh, Camera's on me. Camera's on me, guys. you got to remember that. Oh, okay. I remember Trojan Wars. Right. So now... It was about Troll. condoms. Segway. Troll, segway, segway. I mean, uh, Troll 2, the best worst movie was about the making of Troll 2. It's, and it's fascinating to see the love and passion that even filmmakers whose films are notoriously bad put into it. If you haven't seen Best Worst Movie, it is a terrific documentary. It's on Netflix. It's fun to see, like, how people got cast. It's on Netflix, you know, and... Um, it's it's a wonderful it's a wonderful experience about uh, to see how a, a what's sort of not well received in its own time becomes a cult movie, and I love that it's my recommendation of the week. Now, 
Next week. We're doing recommendations of the week. When did we start this? Season? Been, I got a lot of rec things oh, I want to recommend. Oh, mannequin. Like mannequin. I said, love mannequin. And for the only reason of James Spader is in it. Brilliant. In I it. love James and Spader. I think if you're going to warm yourself up for Age of Ultron, James what Spader. What else can I recommend? And Hollywood. <laughs> guys, Hollywood I, and James Spader. I, I hate to say it, but next week, uh, Pepper Gorn Mom Kermit is not going to be able to join us. No, I have a life outside this place. What's oh, your application in for uh, next week's replacement? We'd love to have you on the show. Can't replace Peppercorn. <laughs> you you can. can only improve on it. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not what I should have said. Bye. So oh, we're wonderful. Done? Thank you for tuning in for our, our top 20 bad movies list. Best worst movies. Come back movies. for next week's Madden Next episode. week, the topic is up for grabs. Our guest spot position Vote will hopefully be Vote for all Heathers. <gasps> so, I already um, voted for all Heathers. It was shot. I want to do all Heathers. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> have a great night, everyone.